a warm welcome to everyone to this talk the topic is uh, a little bit complex because it involves so many different aspects of our life i will try to simplify it and will make sure that at the end of the talk we go home with some practical solutions that we can experiment with our life uh, for last decade or so i have tried to interpret modern science with the help of our culture our rooted culture and this talk is uh, one aspect of it where we are going to correlate uh, some of the modern concepts with the help of our vedic world view so the talk is about yatha pinde tatha brahmande and to explain this concept i'm going to take help of microbes and ecology from the modern science and pran pran vidya pran my course and ayurved from our world world view sanatan world view so before we start i would like all of you to close your eyes and focus on your favorite name and form of ganesh for at least 30 seconds as we move along with this talk you will realize why this exercise is required so please close your eyes take a deep breath and focus on your favorite form of ganesh my favorite form as shown in the picture is mahaganpati and there are certain things that you will see on the in the hands of mahaganpati we will talk about them in this talk uh, a little bit of uh, about what i am and what this talk is about so basically this talk is about microbes with the capital m that means it covers everything which is which falls under microorganism fungi microbes bacteria viruses everything by training and experience i am a computer engineer i am not microbiologist i am not biologist zoologist uh, i i would like to interpret modern science research conclusions in a vedic way uh, i started this interpretation because uh, in last 10 or so years whenever i have uh, read some research paper conclusions where you know the conclusions are exactly uh, what we are following in this part of the world hinduism the rituals the day to day community life that we have over here in india right so that you know some part in some part of the world when the research is happening their conclusions are matching with what we are following so that triggered me to connect uh, what is concluded right now with what was there in the past so that's what we are going to discuss today all images and references taken are from google and they are for education purpose in this talk we will focus on five parts we will first go and check why this subject why are we talking about this then we will go a little bit deeper into the actual principle that we are talking about that is yatha pinde tatha brahmande then we'll see why we are using microbes as a tool to understand the concept of yatha pinde tatha brahmande and then we'll go a little bit deep into the pran marut pranamay kosh food life habits stuff like that and using that we'll try to understand yatha pinde tatha brahmande and the, at the end we'll discuss some of the practical solutions that i have experiment with my life i have shared with my friends and families and they are also getting benefited using them why this subject why do we need to connect modern concepts of ecology or microbiology or any sort of science with the vedic view ayurved pran why why do we need to do this there are several reasons and the first and foremost reason is that ecological destruction of our environment 
is evident everyone knows that it is going on right now right and with each new year it is more accelerated right but at the same time if you go on the street you will find that most of us are either not having time to think about what is going on with our environment or are just least bothered about it so if that is the case it is really critical for us to develop this ecological sensitivity in our community and why this is required why this is important if you if you see some of the past examples for, take for an example chipko andolan chipko andolan bahut safal hua tha uh, with the help of chipko andolan uh, forest conservation uh, policies forest conservation movement were started in india right in 1970s it was in uttarakhand and then in part of the uttar pradesh and went on to become a talking point for all future environmental movements across the world but is is it really you know that thought and that process is still alive in your community in your local circles no nobody knows what was chipko andolan except when they read it in that history textbook textbook during their schooling right in the other part of the world it is the same situation in united states russell carson wrote an book that silent spring where uh, there was a alert discuss on the human kind's poisoning of the biosphere using synthetic chemicals like pesticides right and the grassroots environmental movements were started at that time animal rights water acid drain all those issues are being discussed there but one survey says that only 19% of 1919% of americans report being active participant in any of the environmental movement so that's that's the state of our ignorance about our environment and if we talk about dharma if you want to sustain the life on the basis of dharma this is really critical part of our understanding and that's the reason we are talking about this subject today when we talk about dharma right when we talk about the sustainable living it is really important that both the outer world uh, the environment uh, which we are part of and our inner world our inner body both should be healthy if they are healthy then only we will be able to perform our duties towards our family our society our nation to the universe and that can happen only when there is a connect between the outer world and the inner world if there is no connection if there is a disconnect definitely there will be suffering on the both the side and when that happens it is just a you know dream to think that we, some day we will sustain this universe or this prithvi with the help of dharma to make that happen we need to connect them we need to connect our inner world with the outer world third uh as for uh the science of language or science of semantics or science of sankhya they say that our world view dictates laws and consequences of our actions our nature mother nature has all infinite set of laws using which the world is running right now out of that based on the way we perceive our world right the way our world view is formed and around that the laws are whatever laws are there right only based on that we experience the consequences of our actions and when we talk about the modern world view lacks that wholeness it lacks that uh connectedness it has its own inherent attribute of reductionist so it sees everything into the compartment to some extent that is also required when you are doing a research you do that compartment and understand the system 
part by part but when you are concluding something you need to have the wholeness you the complete uh, system view if if we talk about the modern science they are also evolving and they are coming to this path eventually slowly but we have uh, all those uh, prescriptions available to us in our scriptures if we just try to unveil knowledge out of it it will be very clear for us so when we talk about modern science you you must have uh, seen or experience that the scientific temper in our society is at the peak if we talk about 2020 right but still it is useless to because it is not able to protect the ecology around right sometimes harmless medicines medicines which are titled as harmless becomes dangerous over the decade there are so many such examples out there right why such things happen it happens because one thing is missing in modern science that is the point of view perception drashti modern science framework talks about objectivity the object which we observe and the observer that's it there is no room for drashti and there are some words which i cannot translate so i am going to use them in the sanskrit itself so how you perceive is ma it matters most and that is being ignored at so many levels we have a kahavat right jaisi drashti waisi srushti so while we are busy going into the molecular level of our understanding related to life we forget developing this drashti even our education is not capable or uh, are not having any tools to drive us to this level and when that is happening we really can't have the complete system level world view of what is going on in and based on that we take a call how to interact with the universe when that drashti is developed you know when we are able to develop that drashti then automatically there will be restraint there will be some discipline at the individual level not everything can happen by government not everything can happen by enforcing law and order certain things are there which you need to do by yourself at individual level take for an example uh cutting trees for human needs is not new it was there for ages now right and if we talk about if we if we trust what is there in our scriptures and we see that uh, our seer scientists they provided you know deeper understanding of consciousness and everything what what's not right then they were capable of developing such uh, you know tools which can make their life easy but they did not do that there were some rules also mentioned that when you want to collect the wood it needs to be the dead wood only collect that wood which is dead even the word vriks right in the sanskrit word vriks it means that that part of the tree which is collectible which is which can fall when you cut right so all our names all our uh, rituals uh, laws were based on this drashti the dharma drashti that we were given by our family by our education and due to that maintaining the ecology around us was not a you know difficult task we were not uh, requiring uh, days to celebrate it or a big promotional videos to find uh, to educate the mass that this is an environment day please plant the tree it was it was inherent in our education it was inherent in our living so that's the benefit when we develop this vision about the life now let's go and try to understand why we want to understand this with this principle yatha pinde tatha brahmande yatha pinde tatha brahmande is from yajurved and when this when we have this wholeness view about life you know it becomes uh 
you know very easy to understand and connect the things our we as a man we are tiny replica of the vast universe around us in the if you consider universe as a ocean right we are just a drop of water or a particle of sand right that's what this principle says and you know universe and the individual share such similarities that every part of the universe is represented in the individual in a minute dimension we are going to talk in terms of ayurved so ayurved consider this particular uh, yajurved principle uh, in a different terms with more technical term it says that loka purush samya siddhant it is a fundamental principle of ayurved and if you want to understand how ayurved work or the real science of ayurved you need to digest this principle well this siddhant is the foundation stone of other basic principles of ayurved and you know this siddhant is also applicable to find out if there are any diseases there in individual and how to manage those diseases as well our body flourishes or perishes because of the universe life and death are also controlled by the universe there exists such a close relationship between the universe and the individual that no knowledge of the individual can be obtained without the knowledge of the universe and that's the reason we are talking about this principle today you know what when this understanding is rooted into our culture our uh, day to day routine it is very easy to even maintain our health as well as ecology health so we are right now i mean in this 2020 we have experienced the lockdown right so there was a frog driven lockdown in our culture it was said that when the frogs are out you should be in and when the frogs are in you should be out essentially what it says that if you want to start if you start syncing bodily rhythm with the seasons performing major activities of your day as per the season there is no doubt that your immunity will work in your favor for four months of we call it chaturmas monsoon and post monsoon dharmic society remains stand still no major new business or farming activities start during this time without active mankind what will happen to ecology ecology environment will thrive during this time during these four months the dharmic society perform swadhyay they meet each other for learning they do the seminars they do the new research they do perform their duties related to families and society they perform vrat and upvas all those things happen for this four month and when their own internal vishnu sustaining force in their body is active again for next eight months then that they focus more on their samaj lakshi karma rashtra seva yatra pravas akhada khel krida all abundance of festivity all those happen on that eight months so naturally when we have this mindset when we sync our life with our uh, environment both will be protected our health will be protected and environment will also be protected sometimes we are also blame and we are told that you know we all talk about uh, nature and stuff but then why we consume the plants this was a very lame uh, logic produced when we when you try to uh, think or talk against the mass uh, slaughter or deforestation that's what i mean this is being given to me as a logic so this was the this is the slope that we we chant before we use the tree twig for cleaning our teeth it says that oh forest lord give us long life strength fame progeny and wealth give us a lord supreme wisdom divine and intelligence so when we actually utilize the part of the nature for our selfish purpose we actually worship them we say sorry to them and this mindset remember i talked about the world view 
when you when you have that world view then only this is possible so change in our mindset is very critical right now it is said that whoever is going to see universe as a teacher will grasp everything about life acharya charak in ayurved says that you know when the person who sees all the purushgat and lokgat bhav similar will see what are purushgat and lokgat bhav being in all stages that means when we are awake when we are sleeping or we are, when we are in the deep sleep when we are seeing all these things same similar that's that's actually the moksha as per the acharya charak after seeing para and apara apara at same you no know, that's where you get the ultimate peace that's what uh, acharya charak says fundamentally all the functional and structural similarities are there between our inner body and the universe and that can be understood when we have the concept of panch mahabhut here when we talk about panch mahabhut they are not same as the elements chemical elements that we are taught or we understood by the modern chemistry it's not about that it is about all those elements different state of existence so everything in universe is of panch mahabhut made up of panch mahabhut and the same thing is there in our body so that's the first thing that acharya susrut says that this is the similarity and this is not just functional or structural similarity even functional when this panch mahabhut are active in our body how they work exactly the same way ecology works and we need to i this image is very important for next of the lecture we need to understand what is ehlok and parlok the skin our skin is a barrier between the inner universe and the outer universe this is where the uh, continuous exchange of information happen between us and our environment besides this there are different other modes as well we will discuss about them these are normal i mean everyone with the common sense know but this boundary realization is is very essential ehlok and parlok and we need to understand that whatever happen into ehlok exactly the same way parlok works so sometimes we know how our body works and as we know it using that concept we'll be able to understand how prakruti works as well and that way we will be more conscious and sensitive about it and sometimes we we don't know how our body works but we know we can see the outer world right how outer world works and using which using those principles uh we try to understand our inner body as well and that's how ayurved works if you go into uh, go deep into the ayurved you will find several such uh, siddhant like this lok purush samya siddhant all of them have you know roots into the parlok the outer world they will explain those scientific phenomena with something that you can understand you can perceive with your eyes so let's try to understand this this let's also contemplate on the similarity so lokgat is what is outer world and purushgat is what is in inner world so these are the similarities mentioned in ayurvedic text that what is outer world if it is prithvi the solid part solid state of anything that you see outside it is a murti inside the structure anatomy that build sustain our body up watery part that you see outside it is a clay inside and so and so forth there are different ways we can find the similarity today we are going to talk about uh, two things actually three things aditya rudra and marut that's what we are going to focus today how they are similar with the inner part of our and the similarity goes on with the cycle of our uh, birth and death as well this universe it has it has birth it has satyug krutyug 
त्रेता युग द्वापर युग कलयुग एंड एट द एंड इट एंड द सेम वे वी हैव अवर डिफरेंट स्टेट ऑफ अवर लिविंग यू नो वाई दिस इज इम्पोर्टेंट विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस विल बी एबल टू डेवलप a uh, mindset that i talked about that this entire universe is is a cyclic one everything is getting repeated over this large scale of cycle that we have there are n number of satyug there are n number of dwapar yug there are n number of kalyug in the same way we have n number of birth happening right now right you will also get to know you will also uh, a uh, question over here that in this why we have compared this ihlok means our body with the parlok why we have compared this now for that also there is answer given by uh, acharya susrut he has mentioned that in this universe this entire universe is made for purush this human body is a reflection of purush which you which is actually controlling the outer world and what all other things you see outside human is in the center and that's the reason if you have a human birth you are the luckiest one out of all and when you have a opportunity to realize this and become one with the universe that's why this ihlok is equated with the purush that is human body and not any other animal or plant body they are there they are also alive they also have their own a smaller set of subset of universe alive but all of them are working for us working for humans keeping us alive for some cause what is that cause that i keep question open for our audience if you want to understand this better we will use acharya pv sharma some of the observations uh he said that this principle yatha pindya tatha brahmande is very easy when you try to compare the usage of herbs that we have for example the bark the tree bark that we use as a herb most of the times not always but most of the time it is used for skin diseases lata giloy is very famous right so when we are using those most of the time they are related to muscle related issues we find solution in lata for if there are any problems with muscles uh anar anar ke jo dane hain right they are beej they are seeds they are too too many together and they are being used as a medicine even modern science supports there are research papers related to it that they they are related to infertility treatment they help us in infertility treatment same way the same structure of anar right it helps us for gastro intestine uh, problems as well it it works really best for all those stomach related issues that we see around grapes grapes are good for lungs and whatever examples i am giving you will find uh, research related to it it is not something that i have imagined or acharya pv sharma has given from some imagination it is a proven facts in the ayurved world atibala atibala flowers they are like kidney and they are being used for kidney problems pipali it is used for bronchopulmonary issues so this is how we establish the concept of yatha pinde tatha brahmande when we have this mindset it becomes easy to understand the world of microbes and i have selected my research surrounding microbes because around 2012 or 13 a uh, uh, microbial project was started in some university in the western world and after that there is a you know 
flood of so many research related to microbes if you want to understand this this microbes and their work on our body their work on the soil you can see it pratyaks it is a pratyaks praman for us we can see the change we can see the revival of soil we can see the revival of health with the help of microbes now let's talk about the microbes in form of parlok and ihlo first and foremost thing that we need to understand is art of surfing in the microbial sea as you know surfing on the sea is very it's an art right you can't just go and uh, surf on the sea if you don't have practice and that practice comes with continuous efforts so like uh, skim boarders at sea we must learn to balance ourselves in this self sea of microbes when i say sea of microbes what i want to say is that we can't really avoid microbes all around us there is absolutely impossible to be in the sterile world it is it is not possible to have a sterile environment at all microbes when i say microbes uh, with capital m it means all all those biological markers around bacteria viruses fungi and some some genetical material as well right some genetical messaging that happens between two species uh, that is called horizontal gene transfer a gene transferred from uh, animal to plant or plant to animal and animal to human like that so that activity is continuously going on we can't avoid it what we can do is we can try to balance our body improve the host condition ihlok so that we can easily surf into this microbial sea by avoiding all those infections or viral fever or bacterial infection all those things can be avoided when we work on our host condition when we develop that surfing skill within us then it is easy to surf through this microbial sea you know mother nature does not like vacuum you place your hand anywhere and you will be in contact with the millions and billions of bacteria and viruses no way you can avoid it like a giant wave to face when you are doing the surfing you cannot anyway kill all those bacteria like you cannot change the pattern of the wave if wave is coming on your way it will be there what you can do is you can try to balance and that balance is nothing but improving our host condition improving the way our body is formed in terms of ayurved when we are samudos there are little chance that the external environment or the exchange that we do with our environment will actually make us sick may not be possible and that's something that we need to learn from the parlok that there is absolutely no way we can have a sterile environment uh, there were scientists who were saying that uh, the newborn baby is gut is sterile or its body is sterile but that's also false new latest research is say that the newborn is also not sterile the, they still found microbes over there in the newborn right and the birth canal when they pass through it when we pass through it we we capture some of the microbes on our screen and that becomes part of our body ihlo there are modern researches which says that 90% of the cells in our body are microbial making us more microbes than the mammal a super organism thus making the human body best viewed as a ecosystem ecology that's where the parlok and ihlo concept and mind mindset helps us current estimates suggest that there are more than 10000 different species of microbes in and on our body approximately the same number as the species of birds that exist on the planet not all of these microbes are detrimental to our health that's the point i want to bring to this table in fact very few of them are harmful and many have forged long and essential relationship with our bodies as unbelievable it may seem to you 
our genome our genes right uh, which 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 are fundamental information block programming block in our cells they are also evolving based on the cooperation body has with this 90% of cells microbial cells microbes enter a human body different ways when we inhale right we inhale the air and with that microbes come into our body uh, when we eat something that's where that's the another major event when we when we get the outer environment microbes microbial sea into our body and then uh, there is if there is any cut if we are taking some drugs by blood that's where the opening happens if we have pyorrhea if our teeth are bleeding we when we unconsciously open those things that's where the microbes enter into our body and the last is uh, when we are into the sex so all these are different ways we exchange microbes with the perloc but essentially eloc is 90% microbes and when we when we talk about the philosophical aspects of modern biology there are researches they say that in each of our cell there is a component called mitochondria which is like a inner sun for each cell which takes care of energy of each cell and those researches says that mitochondria act like a bacteria it's like a bacteria trapped into the cell that's what the research is say that means if we consider that philosophically we are 100% microbial or a super organism or a ecology or a universe itself where it is duty given to us so that we take care of this body well and perform our duties towards the parlo towards anything which is non self which is not i am and in parlok let's go to parlok again soil microbes right uh, if there is a little little or reduced tillage then soil microbes sustain but we are now into mechanical world we use the tractor that makes the soil hard it reduces the porosity of the soil and if you want to revive the soil there is no other way but go back to the gau adharit kheti that's the way that maintains the soil moving further gut microbe this is really interesting concept in ehlok it says that diet microbiota interacts and control the gene expression it is called epigenetic programming that means our genes they are also controlled by microbes so that's the benefit of having a healthy gut microbes in our body now back to parlok again here it says that top performing soil microbes is the only way to make the soil sustainable uh, soil microbes are key for sustainable agriculture and to achieve that microbes only can help and in 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 terms of bharat if we talk right those healthy microbes that we want comes really in great abundance when we are relying on the zebu cattle that is our gau mata right gau mata's dung and uh, urine they are they are potent medium to attract these microbes to the soil and make the soil healthy again not only that in our culture when the gau adhar kheti was norm people or farmers were very ready to make sure that cows eat in their farm on their farmland because even cow saliva has those healthy microbe which will control the pest and we don't really need to use the pesticides e look research says this obese dog and obese human share the gut demography that means you know when you are a obese whether you are a dog or a human it is the same thing it is the same microbes working in that body and this body both the bodies are having the same same microbes so that means these microbes are basically based on some host condition and not just the environment so some host condition in the dog and some host condition in human they are similar and that's the reason obesity is there and the relevant microbes are also there 
there is a research which says that damage or disturb ecology induces vector borne epidemics it says that uh, near the deforested land you will find the most disease carrying mosquitoes and that is because of excess nitrates into the water since the trees are cut uh, that excess nitrate is now in the land which is not consumed by the trees and that when goes into the water it gives it promotes the disease carrying mosquitoes man is known by the company he keeps we all know this known phrase right but it is actually true we all have our own microbial cloud our own microbial footprint our own energy footprint humans emit at least 10 is to 6 biological particles per hour and that is that is the richness that we have if we are in company of uh, healthy people uh, we will be exchanging the healthy microbes with their cloud and this is the reason that you will find uh, most modern hospitals are like death bed more death happen because of hospitalization than uh, the care into the small units or at home and this is not my words it, research is related to this are also available uh, there was a research by dr uday balwa bhawalkar in iit mumbai and he has very interesting point of view he says that all these microbes ants rats they are sanitation pests by employed by nature they will be there i mean those pathogens those disease carrying mosquitoes they will be there only when we have made environment uh, complacent for them for example if there is a ph value over given over here in this uh, graph uh, at certain ph and at certain moisture on the x side it is a moisture at specific level only you will find cockroaches at home at specific ph and temperature only you will find ants and rats and so mosquitoes so these are sanitation pests they will be there into environment only when there is such condition that we have created and i consider this i use this concept to understand our inner dirt or infection as well so when our host conditions are not good there will be some toxins in our blood accumulated and those toxins when we want to when nature want to clean microbes to clean them will be there and maybe that's how we call it a viral infection or a bacterial infection where you live shapes your immune system more than your genes this is also based on the latest research which says that where and with whom we live are responsible for 60 to 80 percent of our immune system we have a ritual it says that for first 100 days for newborn we'll keep them into the controlled environment now we don't know what is the science behind it but the latest science research says that first 100 days are very crucial for any newborn and they need to be into the familiar environment so that uh, their gut their skin are uh, you know exposed to the healthy known friendly bacteria and when that does not happen they have given the four key bacteria when that does not happen then the autoimmune diseases or the allergy risk increases for that child for throughout the life there was a study done in the france uh, in the louvre famous museum it says that even though all those people with different microbial footprints um, different biological markers visit this museum the stability remains there for that particular room or that particular area of the museum for microbes what does this says that how we architect our homes that also matters most if if you have a mechanical fan outlet uh, at home and you have a window open both of them have impact on the microbial cloud that we'll have in your home so how you design your home how you design your workplace also has impact on our health it decides what type of microbes will be there and part of that we will exchange inhale in our body and that's how our health will be health state will change there are research is related to sick building syndrome as well in certain buildings people will always fall sick 
and this is the reason that the structure architect is also related to this this is last part of this micro part it is really interesting research in california where doctors over there they found that hand sex spread the diseases despite a really good hand wash and sanitization so this was interesting it was in university of california los angeles and they actually started stopping this social custom so that they, we, they don't exchange uh, i mean somehow this disease is from one person to another hand washing was also not restricting it and the reason is i see that it's not, the microbes are based on the pranic footprint our energy cloud that is surrounding us that's where the answer is and that's the reason even after hand wash uh, this disease war was getting transmitted to one from one person to another person okay so now we are into the last part of our session which says that based on what we discussed so far you know i is becoming obsolete and this is the university conclusion they say that we thinking of plants and animals including humans as a autonomous individuals is a serious over simplification we are not so simple that we can understand things organ by organ in compartment we need to consider the wholeness of our existence ecology of our existence what which is similar to what is outside and it is a reflection of what is outside so ultimately it goes into the environmental protection that will required for optimum health for maximum people and why we need to talk in terms of pran right now you know there is a when there is a new concept in the market there will be race to encase it there will be over the counter solutions to increase the microbial health right and it is already started even there are research is related to fecal trans trans transplantation that means eat your own stool or eat healthy people's stool and then you will be good at it so so to counter this we need to think in terms of pran there are several stressors which outer uh, environmental stressors like our uh, food our life routine our uh, you know stress level all those decides whether we will have healthy microbes or unhealthy microbes within us so all those stressors are outside so that's what we need to think about when we start thinking about it we just can't do the apple to apple comparison people do that and they actually invite more problems for themselves for example hriday rog uh, so in ayurved it says that arjun arjun ki chhal hriday rog ke liye achhi hai right okay so use it for heart diseases blindly that's a trap if you do that you will fall more sick because in ayurved no, there is no generalization of medicine arjun ki chhal may be good for someone with a heart disease it may not be good for someone with the same heart disease we can't really do this apple to apple com comparison and devise products or ideas for health so we what we need is we need a journey from applied science to fundamental science and then we need to map fundamental science of western world view and the bhartiya world view then only we will be able to find out the proper solutions for all the health problems that we have, that we have as well as environmental problems that we have so when we were all talking about microbes virus and genes we should start actually thinking about sankhya philosophy that is jal agni and prithvi tatva or some higher abstraction like pran or marut then only we will be able to find out optimum solution with the wholeness with the principle of yatha pinde tatha brahmande by not harming the environment as well as not as well as solving the inner issues health issues so in taitariya upanishad it is called panchakosha sharir we are not just annamay kosh the physical body there are four other layers which makes our existence complete here what we are what i am trying to introduce to you is pranamay kosh pranamay kosh is the next layer on top of which our body resides so all the epi epigenetic factors that we see you know that are working in terms of microbes they are into this pranamay kosh and when we talk about pranamay kosh we may not be able to see directly the energy layer around our body but 
they their activities are always reflected into body so keeping body as our uh, subject the physical body we can experiment and see the that yes any exercise or any solution related to pranamaya course is actually working there are 72000 nadis given and these 72000 nadis actually circulate pran in our body continuously and if this 72000 highways are blocked somewhere then definitely there will be some problem of health in that portion of the body deh madhya so in ganpati atharvasis it says that ganpati resides into the muladhar which is a deh madhya of our body what is deh madhya in in birds it is stomach in animals it is heart in plants it is roots and for us it is a muladhar the gut so that's where the maximum that that's where the actual energy center is so our sadhana even our spiritual sadhana start with the muladhar chakra so our focus should be on the gut healthy gut skin microbes eye microbes all those microbes are there but if we take care of gut which is a energy center for us we'll be able to take care of all other microbial community in our body there was a research which says that when we look into look at the birds the microbes differs by their diet but birds that have the same diet the microbe differs by their location so where we have taken the birth where we are living right now that place is also important for us in the same way muladhar chakra ganpati resides into the muladhar based on our pran their capacity our imagination for ganpati will differ and our sadhana will also differ porosity is life whether it is soil or it is our body when the prana movement is possible that's where the life is where the energy flows there is a life when energy is stuck life goes out of order mr subodh kumar i met him in the facebook he interpreted some of the verses of veda and this talks that he he told me that uh, this description is about microbes he basically focused on the word marut this marut he actually according to him is microbes but when i looked into some other researches uh, professor raja ramon rai he is a physics professor according to him marut gun is nothing but a radiation pressure marut are sons of rudra as in the veda so he equates rudra to radiation and marut as a radiation pressure and there was another professor professor kapil kumar dwivedi he says that it is a electromagnetic radiation or a field in a body which works as a marut so ultimately if we include the physics we will be able to conclude microbes are nothing but this radiation pressure uh, or electromagnetic fields in our body or the nervous system at work which is with the help of pran causing this microbe so that we have optimum health or sanitation sanitize sanitation work going on in our body and i tried to correlate this with the other research that are going on uh, in physics and it says that microbial expansion shaped by the fluid flow so which is i mean i consider this that it is like based on the pranic flow in our body in those 72000 nadis it will decide what type of microbes we will have in different part of the body so at the end we should start thinking in terms of this terminology try to interpret our scriptures in that way and then find out practical solutions which are lok bhogya not just for us but for entire world uh, i will take last 3 minutes uh, to give some practical solutions that we should uh take at home and think about it and try to experiment with the self the first and foremost is dharma rooted ecological mindset whatever rituals we have right don't just blindly ignore them try to find out dharma behind it try to find out how exactly it helps individuals performing the rituals as well as the ecology either both or one of them are going to be benefited by all the life routines that are set by our ancestors the second is get your hands filled dirt with dirt 
have habit of doing gardening if not farming this is really important for exchanging healthy pran with the environment and when i say farming or gardening naturally it is a zero budget or organic farming cow based farming that's what we should do we should rely on those live pranic uh, inputs prasad given by gau mata to us and use them for our benefits third one is surya namaskar or a pran upasana this is something as i as we talked i gave the hint radiation pressure right so how we move our organs how if they are stand still definitely they are not going to be helpful and the original source of pran in this universe is surya so when we do the pran upasana definitely it is going to reflect in our inner body in chinese they call it qigong they do this exercise to maintain the energy flow into the body pran upasana so this is something that is required we need to be devoted having devotion towards the nature there are elements personified uh, like hanuman hanuman is 11th rudra so it is actually a radiation personified if we talk about this you understand radiation better if you do the hanuman sadhana same way ganpati he is a protector of that radiation into the muladhar because he stays there he stays into the muladhar so that marud gan that we see right it is protected by ganpati so pran upasana one of them is we need to do this uh, by devotion and the last is anpan so whatever food we take it is divided into two part the one is the one that actually hold the pran in our body so that it can flow into those 72000 nadis so all those is called anna it has five parts it this and this slide itself is entire talk we can talk about and is it is a scientific diet if we add up it is definitely going to help maintain the great health and the another part is pan this is what actually transport the pran into the body so when we there is a imbalance into our diet if we have just exclusive ann or exclusive pan or there is no balance into it definitely we will face the health issues and at the end uh, since i am also trying to devise curriculum for uh, gurukul education if i have this pranic understanding at different level we can apply it and make our education pranic pran or panchako sensitive we need to make our next generation panchako sensitive we, we need to make them aware about this fundamental princi- principle that we are ourselves ecology connected with the outer ecology and both needs to be both requires to be in the balance so that's what we should take as outcome of this talk i hope this was useful for you all and this is where i um, write all these interesting connection connecting dots that i do main is sir bhaiya ko kaafi time se follow kar rahe hu bhaiya namaskar i hope i am audible aapko awaaz aa rahi hai ha aapki awaaz aa rahi hai bahut informative tha aapka session aur इसमें कई चीजें हमें पता है बट मेरा क्वेश्चन आपसे ये है कि हम अपनी आने वाली जनरेशन मैं दिल्ली में रहती हूँ तो क्या हम ऐसा कुछ प्लान आप कर सकते हैं कि जैसे संस्कृत है ये भाषा विलुप्त होती जा रही है थैंक्स टू इंस्टाग्राम फेसबुक कम नहीं था तो अब इंस्टाग्राम वाली लाइफ है अब पैंडेमिक है और हम लोग गौशाला से जुड़े हुए हैं पिछले पांच साल से दिल्ली में काम कर रहे हैं तो बच्चे जानते हैं गौशाला बट अब पैंडेमिक में हम उनको घर पे बैठे हैं तो कुछ ऐसा भैया कुछ प्लान कर सकते हैं कि खेती भी पता है कि केमिकल फ्री खाना चाहिए सब कुछ है कुछ ऐसा करिकुलम जितने आपके नॉलेज है मैं आपको फॉलो कर रही हूँ काफी टाइम से कि हम ऑनलाइन करने से हमें एक ऑप्शन मिलेगी कि हम मास तक पहुंचे ऑल ओवर इंडिया हम ये चीज कर पाए क्योंकि बहुत सारे कनेक्टेड है लोग मैं आर्ट ऑफ लिविंग से जुड़ी हुई हूँ क्वेश्चन ये प्रिसाइज है कि हम नई जनरेशन जो है मेरा एज ग्रुप है थर्टीन से ट्वेंटी वन उसमें हम बच्चों को कैसे कनेक्ट करें ये वाली नॉलेज से तो इसके लिए हम क्या कुछ करिकुलम आप बना सकते हैं ऑनलाइन हाँ 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मैं ऐसा बताना चाहूंगा कि आई पर्सनली डोंट प्रीफर ऑनलाइन एजुकेशन आई आई मीन देर आर माय पर्सनल रिजर्वेशन बेस्ड ऑन वॉट आई हैव ऑब्जर्व पर हाँ ऐसा कुछ हम कर सकते हैं कि वी कैन डिवाइज सम एक्टिविटीज विच कैन हेल्प आवर नेक्स्ट जनरेशन टू ग्रास्प दिस नॉलेज देर देर कैन बी सम प्रैक्टिकल एक्टिविटीज सम प्रोजेक्ट्स दैट वी कैन गिव एंड देन वी कैन मीट लाइक दिस इन मीटिंग टू डिस्कस दो थिंग्स शेयर आवर कंक्लूजन आवर अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड देन टेक इट टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल सो दैट कैन बी डन श्योर सर जी आपने अभी प्राण का एक्सचेंज धरती के साथ बताया आजकल एक नया कॉन्सेप्ट है अर्थिंग का अर्थिंग और ग्राउंडिंग का यूएस में बहुत पॉपुलर हो रहा है मैं भी एक्सपेरिमेंट कर रहा हूँ सबके साथ क्योंकि तो हमारे बारे में जी हाँ। जी बहुत बहुत सही बात आपने बताई अर्थिंग के बारे में जो आपने बताई ना वो हमारे यहाँ पे कॉमन रिचुअल था मैं आपको बताता हूँ अगर आप बिहार और उत्तर प्रदेश की साइड से आते हो राइट right? तो वहां पे जो वैद्य लोग जो थे ओजा जिनको बोलते हैं जो जो गांव गांव जाके लोगों को ट्रीट करते हैं बिहार उत्तर प्रदेश के एरिया में लाइटनिंग सबसे ज्यादा होती है ये रामायण में भी लिखा हुआ है तो लाइटनिंग के कारण से अवर हमारी जो इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक फुटप्रिंट है ना वो डिस्टर्ब हो जाती है इससे कई लोग आ, पागल जैसे भी हो जाते हैं उसका सोल्यूशन क्या देते हैं ये वैद्य लोग जो परंपरा से ट्रीटमेंट करते आ रहे वो उनको मिट्टी में जाके सुला देते हैं कि आप जाओ और मिट्टी में चार दिन रहो इससे आपके ये प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो जाएगी तो बेसिकली ग्राउंडिंग इज एसेंशियल जैसे अभी अतिथि जी ने बोला ना कि क्या क्या एक्टिविटी कर सकते हैं तो मैं जो एजुकेशन एक्सपेरिमेंट्स कर रहा हूँ जिसमें हम छोटे बच्चों को और पेरेंट्स को ये कंपल्सरी एक्टिविटी बताते हैं कि दिनचर्या में आधा घंटा बच्चों के साथ आप मिट्टी में कुछ भी पहने बिना बेरफुट चले और बातें कीजिए ये संवाद सबसे इफेक्टिव होगा और इट इज द इम्यूनिटी बूस्टर फॉर यू एंड योर चाइल्ड सो यू आर राइट दिस इज इन थिंग बट इट इज ऑलरेडी देयर वी जस्ट नीड टू रिवाइव इट विथ अवर परस्पेक्टिव जी एक और प्रश्न आपने कहा गणपति रिजाइड इन द मध्य पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी और अलग अलग मानव शरीर के लिए मूलाधार दूसरे जानवरों के लिए हार्ट और वो सब तो ये ये थॉट पहले भी आ चुका है कि एक स्पीकर आनंद वेंकट वेंकट रामन न्यूरोलॉजिस्ट हैं यूएस में और उन्होंने ये कॉन्सेप्ट इंट्रोड्यूस करा था हमारे संगम टॉक्स में कि देवता सब आ, किसी और डायमेंशन में कहीं हवा में उड़ रहे हैं ऐसे नहीं है देवताज आर एक्चुअली इनसाइड अस और हम उपासना से उनको एक्टिवेट कर रहे हैं अपने शरीर अपने माइंड ब्रेन के अंदर स्पेसिफिकली उन्होंने कहा था आपका कुछ कमेंट इसके ऊपर हाँ बहुत अच्छी बात कही उन्होंने और ही इज रियली ट्रू टूडे ओनली यस्टरडे नाइट आई पोस्टेड समल्ड आर्टिकल्स रिलेटेड टू पितरु तर्पण एंड श्राद्ध ऑन फेसबुक uh those articles talks about the same thing and i have taken references from modern researches those researches says that we have a uh, instant viral load in our body and those viruses viruses are nothing but messengers they they are information exchange medium between two cells and we are lured by those viruses inside us and what i see is that when we do the pitru tarpan or when we actually think our ancestors by their qualities by their photo by their memories we by by our mind we actually try to activate those genes uh, biomarkers which are gifted to us by them now this is hypothesis but this is actually how actually we talk with our dev our devtas and take their helps they are ready to help us but we are you know so numb or we are so uh, we have blocked our sensitivity to that level that we really don't want to understand those things so yes devtas are there to help us they are there in different forms we see their presence in different forms like as i said ancient viruses are there there is 
देर वॉज वन रिसर्च विच से जो चूहा होता है लैब का जो चूहा दे आर इन वेरी बैड कंडीशन राइट फॉर देम इट इज ऑलवेज अ स्ट्रेसफुल एनवायरमेंट एंड दे पास ऑन दिस स्ट्रेस एनवायरमेंटल स्ट्रेस रिलेटेड इंफॉर्मेशन टू नॉट जस्ट देयर चिल्ड्रन बट टू देयर ग्रैंड चिल्ड्रन एंड ग्रांड ग्रेट ग्रांड चिल्ड्रन एज वेल दैट मीन्स अवर एंसेस्टर्स लिव्ड इन टू दिस पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एक्सपीरियंस्ड ऑल द एनवायरमेंटल प्रॉब्लम्स फूड प्रॉब्लम्स वॉटर प्रॉब्लम्स हैव पास ऑन दैट इंफॉर्मेशन टू अर्स एज वेल कंपेयर टू माइस कंपेयर टू रेड we are much more evolved and super organism so all those helps are there for us if we become more sensitive then definitely maintaining health is not a big issue for us anisar uh, ji namaskar uh, bahut hi interesting session tha bahut achhi insight thi in fact maine to pehli bar aapka kiya hai aur chahungi ki aage bhi karti rahu to uh, aap log please uh, hame batate rahiye ga सर uh, मैं ये पूछना चाह रही थी आपने बताया कि गणेश जी मूलाधार में रिसाइट करते हैं तो मूलाधार में अगर गणेश जी रिसाइट करते हैं तो उससे गठ हमारा कैसे रिलेटेड है क्योंकि गठ तो मेरे ख्याल से मणिपुर चक्र का होना चाहिए तो यहाँ पे थोड़ा कंफ्यूजन है उसको बताइएगा बहुत अच्छी बात की आपने मूलाधार चक्र सो एक्चुअली दिस इज माई अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड एज आई सेड दैट माई वर्ल्ड व्यू can be improved as well so what i understood understand is that the chakra that is next uh, the if it if, if it is manipur right so it has it is being protected by the upward chakra that is muladhar chakra ganpati resides there marudgan resides into the uh, the lower chakra but it is being protected by the upward chakra that's how i see that's how i consider ganapati as a protector of that prana that all pranic movement that are happening into the gut i hope i was uh, logical into my answer but uh, this is what i understood this is how i have equated it with the muladhar chakra uh, nisak ji really your talk is very wonderful at my some time of academic i studied microbiology but you have given a different angle to that so it's really appreciable i have two question basically and uh, my questions was related to what to eat and what, how to eat so like in our food system we normal days we eat differently and in festivals we eat differently so this has any relation to recharge our microbes in the body in the festival season with different food and my second question was how to eat means uh, where we should sit because we can see the farmers they are sitting on the ground and in home also we are sitting on the ground while in the restaurants we are sitting on the chairs so can you comment on this is there any impact yeah sure uh, my last slide was about food only right it talked about two types of food uh, given uh, segregated in ayurved one is anna and another is pan so anna and pan both are having a role into our body to maintaining our health and uh, it is really i mean i can just give you hint that yes our festivals most of them falls into the transition period when there is a seasonal change when there is a change into the moisture or temperature outside so those festivals uh, this is still a research that i am doing i am not i have not completed it but i see it in this manner that festivals on the transition of seasons right are there to indicate us that now is the time to switch our diet for example holi ke pehle hum jo khate the aur holi ke time pe jo hum khate hai usme difference hai sardi ki ritu mein jo khate hai usko gradually hame vasant ritu mein kam karna hai vasant ritu mein jo hum khate hai wo holi aate aate to band karna hi hai kyunki ab agar grishma aa raha hai so aap sirf ekadashi ya shivratri ya navratri unke jo calendar bhi aap map karoge na season ke sath so this will be more easy to understand aur har ek ekadashi mein hame bataya gaya hai ki aapko ye diet khana hai ye khana hai ye nahi khana hai right it is a huge field of research main akela to kar nahi payunga aur jaise ila ji ne bataya ye acha session tha ye mera bhi pehli bar tha 
this was the first time i have given talk on this topic so far i have only written about it so if more hands are together doing research taking up all these different sectors where we can relate ourselves with uh, panchakos and their activities you know we will be having a huge source of knowledge and practical solutions for mankind aapka dusra question uh, aap repeat karenge alok ji alok ji ka dusra shayad question tha wahan par ek comment hai mera wo keh rahe the ki zameen pe baithte hain hum pakistan bhi baithte hain to ek clarification se zarur deni thi ki जमीन पे जैसे अर्थिंग की बात निसर्ग जी कर रहे थे वो एस्फॉल्ट सीमेंट घरों में नंगे पैर चलना उससे शायद फायदा कोई नहीं है लोग निसर्ग जी आप जी सही बात है आपकी बात सही है और जमीन पे बैठना या कुर्सी कुर्सी पे बैठना राइट या सो बेसिकली आवर पोस्चर राइट आई विल एड वन थिंग ओवर हियर जैसे हम बैठते हैं खड़े रहते हैं उठते हैं चलते हैं उसकी डायरेक्ट इम्पैक्ट हमारे ब्लड प्रेशर पे होती है ऐसा रिसर्च बताता है दैट मींस बेस्ड ऑन आवर पोस्चर द आकाश एलिमेंट इन आवर बॉडी दो लिटल वैक्यूम्स विच आर देयर साइनसिस विच आर देयर राइट दे आर बीइंग कंट्रोल्ड एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट दो सिग्नल्स वाया नर्वस सिस्टम विल पास ऑन टू एंटायर बॉडी वन ऑफ द मेजर नर्व दैट इज कॉल्ड वेगस नर्व उसके भी आज बहुत एक्सपेरिमेंट्स वेस्टर्न वर्ल्ड में हो रहे हैं वेगस नव स्टिम्यूलेटर ऐसे डिवाइस आने लगे सो so, वेगस नव क्या करता है बॉडी के जितने भी ऐसे सिग्नल्स है वो सब गट को पहुंचाता है या फिर गट की जो हेल्थ है उसको ब्रेन तक पहुंचाता है इट्स अ टू बाय डायरेक्शनल हाईवे इन ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन एक्शन सो यस पोस्चर विल हैव अ इम्पैक्ट ऑन नॉट जस्ट गट माइक्रोव बट ओवरऑल आवर हेल्थ बहुत बहुत नमस्कार आपसे एक प्रश्न था दो प्रश्न थे एक प्रश्न तो अभी सामने आया आपने कान के ऊपर जो हेडफोन लगाया उसके साथ में कुछ पॉलिथिन सा लगा रखा है राइट right? सो so, उसका भी कुछ ना कुछ पर्पज है यहाँ पे <laughs> क्या आप उसे एक्सप्लेन कर सकते हैं दूसरी चीज थी कि आप आकाश तत्व की बात कर रहे थे अभी Uh, मेरा क्वेश्चन उससे पहले ही uh, दिमाग में आ चुका था आकाश तत्व जो है हम जब उसको रिलेट करते हैं तो आकाश तत्व स्टेट्स ऑफ मैटर की बात करते हैं आपके एक रिसर्च में भी आपने लिखा कि आकाश तत्व कोई भी जो लिविंग बॉडीज हैं वो इन्हीं फाइव स्टेट्स में एग्जिस्ट करती हैं तो आकाश तत्व जब हम स्पेस की बात करते हैं तो उसे हम स्टेट बोल सक मतलब उसमें कोई लिविंग थिंग एग्जिस्ट कर सकती है लिविंग से थिंग्स उसमें एग्जिस्ट कर सकते हैं बट उसकी स्टेट ही वही हो Uh, इस पे थोड़ी सी क्लैरिफिकेशन मेरे को आज तक कहीं पे नहीं समझ आ पाई ज्यादा सुभाष काक जी की भी एक आ, 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 बुक है माइंड एंड स्पेस करके माइंड एंड सॉल तो उसमें भी उन्होंने जब एक्सप्लेन किया तो ये चीज थोड़ी सी क्लियर नहीं हुई थी आप प्लीज एक्सप्लेन करेंगे मैं पूरा तो एक्सप्लेन अभी नहीं कर पाऊंगा इट विल टेक लॉट मच ऑफ टाइम पर मैं आपको एक हिंट दूंगा एक रेफरेंस जो मैंने अभी टॉक के दरमियान दिया प्रोफेसर राजा राम राय उनकी एक पुस्तक है वैदिक फिजिक्स उसका आप अभ्यास कीजिए उसमें उन्होंने ये जो आकाश तत्व है उसको बहुत ही अच्छी तरह से समझाया हुआ है हाउ एग्जेक्टली यूनिवर्स एक्सपांड एंड हाउ एग्जेक्टली आकाश एज ए एनवेलोप होल्ड एवरीथिंग जो आकाश तत्व है उससे ही वायु तत्व बना है वायु तत्व है उससे ही अग्नि तत्व बना है अग्नि तत्व से ही पृथ्वी तत्व बना है राइट right? सो अल्टीमेटली आकाश इज होल्डिंग एवरीथिंग तो आप अगर वो पुस्तक का अभ्यास करोगे तो उसमें ये जो आपका क्वेश्चन है उसका आंसर आपको मिल जाएगा और हाँ, जी। ये जो ये जो ये कॉटन है कॉटन का मैंने यहाँ पे लगाया रखा है जनरली आई डोंट लाइक दिस माइक्रोफोन आई कीप माई सेल्फ ऑन द स्पीकर बट आज बोलना था इसलिए मैंने ये रखा है Uh, जो यह, यहाँ पे जो प्लास्टिक होता है ना वो मुझे अनकंफर्टेबल लगता है तो उसके लिए मैंने जस्ट एक बैरियर बनाया है कॉटन सो इट डज नॉट हार्म मच टू स्किन नथिंग मच एक्सेस राइट नाउ एक्चुअली क्या होता है कि जब कुछ रिचुअल या कोई ज्ञान के बारे में बताता है ना तो उसका हर बिहेवियर में कुछ ना कुछ मिस्टेक दिखना शुरू हो जाता है <laughs> जी राघव जी फर्स्टली मैं थैंक यू बोलना चाहूंगा राहुल जी आपको For organizing this event and Nisarg ji, 
आपका चैनल मैं 2017 से फॉलो कर रहा हूँ कोइंसिडेंटली मैंने आपसे दो तीन दिन पहले भी मैंने आपको मैसेज किया था थैंक यू आई मैंने मुझे बहुत ही मैंने आपके चैनल ने मुझे पूरे ये लाइन दिस लाइन ऑफ थिंकिंग बिकॉज मैं नॉर्मली कैलकटा ब्रॉन एंड ब्रॉट अप के डू सिटी के डू पूरा एंड uh, एक तो सबसे पहले इस स्टॉक के बाद में मुझे रियलाइज हुआ कि इस स्टॉक के अंदर में भी मल्टीपल टॉक्स हैं देर आर सो मेनी टॉपिक्स विच यू जस्ट टच्ड बट उसके अंदर में भी डीपली बहुत जाया जा सकता है एंड uh, तो आई मीन आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट राहुल जी से एंड आपसे भी इफ पॉसिबल एक लाइक टू थ्री थॉट टॉपिक्स विच आई फाउंड इंटरेस्टिंग आई वुड रियली लाइक टू नो मोर अबाउट वन इज रिगार्डिंग योर आपका जो आन पान फूड रिलेटेड आपने जो बताया था फूड एंड हेल्थ का नंबर टू वॉज आपने जो गुरुकुल का सिस्टम स्टार्ट किया है बिकॉज मैं अभी रिसेंटली मैरिड हूँ आई एम स्टार्टिंग अ फैमिली एंड दैट माइंड परस्पेक्टिव आई मेरे मेरे मैं थर्टी ईयर्स का हूँ तो मेरे एज ग्रुप में अभी बहुत सारे बच्चों बच्चे हो रहे हैं मेरे फैमिली में इट्स ऑलवेज इंटरेस्टिंग एंड या दैट इज द नंबर सेकेंड टॉपिक थर्ड टॉपिक इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव वेर आई एम कमिंग फ्रॉम मैं कैलकटा से हूँ सिटी के डूब कॉन्वेंट स्कूल एजुकेटेड हूँ मैं अब्रॉड रहता हूँ तो हम लोग का जो परस्पेक्टिव है इट इज वेरी modern so to say and wahan se coming even a basic knowledge of basic terminology such as things such as pran chakras how exactly it functions what is because these terms are very abstract coming from a very modernist uh, education perspective so ek generals are talk if this could be i mean i don't know i'm this may just so ha uh, and the final question is aapne मेरे को रीसेंट लाइक ऑफ लेट रिसेंटली क्या मैंने हाउ डू यू आइडेंटिफाई व्हाट व्हाट इज द देवता दैट यू शुड आई मीन लाइक हाउ डू यू एम्बार्क ऑन योर स्पिरिचुअल पाथ मैं आपको बताऊं आपका जो क्वेश्चन है उसका आंसर देने के लिए मैं योग्य नहीं हूं मेरी मैं भी एक अभ्यास हूं स्टूडेंट हूं कौन आपको हमारे यहां पे बहुत सारे ऐसे एक्सपर्ट्स है जो हमें इस पे नॉलेज दे सकते हैं Uh, कि हमारा स्पिरिचुअल पाथ कौन सा होना चाहिए आई थिंक संगम टॉक्स में भी बहुत सारे स्पीकर्स ने आके इस पर बात की हुई है तो इफ आई आई मीन क्या वे है उसके ऊपर तो मैं बता नहीं सकता पर डेफिनेटली इफ आई फाइंड अक्रॉस सच पर्सन हु कैन हेल्प आई विल पास ऑन दैट इंफॉर्मेशन टू यू एंड अबाउट ऑल दिस टॉपिक्स दैट यू टॉक डेफिनेटली यस अन्नपान इज अ बिग टॉपिक एंड इट रिक्वायर्स सेपरेट टॉक सेम वे जीनेटिक्स एंड हाउ इट वर्क इन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एपी जीनेटिक्स ऑल दिस टॉक्स कैन बी पॉसिबल चाह रही थी कि मैं एक ऑटो इम्यून डिसऑर्डर के थ्रू जा रही हूँ जिसमें मेरा गट बहुत ज्यादा इन्वॉल्व है और इसको वेस्क्यूलाइटिस बोलते हैं तो सर इसमें आयुर्वेद कैसे हेल्प कर सकता है आपने जो बताया गट्स के संग माइक्रोब्स के साथ डेफिनेटली देर सम प्रॉब्लम विद माइक्रोब्स इन माई गट तो एक तो उसके बारे में जानना चाहूंगी दूसरा एक तो मैं बच्चों के लिए काम करती हूँ छोटे बच्चों के लिए जहां मैं भारतीय संस्कृति की क्लासेस बच्चों के लिए लेती हूँ और दूसरा मैं एल्डरली पीपल के लिए काम करती हूँ तो अगर सर आप एल्डरली पीपल के डाइट और हेल्थ के बारे में थोड़ा सा जस्ट फॉर टू मिनट्स इफ यू कैन से जैसे मैंने राघव जी से बताया कि स्पिरिचुअल पाथ सिलेक्शन की योग्यता मेरी नहीं है उसी तरह से कोई भी रोग का निदान करना भी मैं योग्य नहीं चाहूंगा योग्य नहीं मानूंगा अपने आप को पर मैं इतना जरूर बता पाऊंगा कि आपकी जो कंडीशन है जो इम्यून डिसऑर्डर है मोस्ट ऑफ द इम्यून डिसऑर्डर्स का सॉल्यूशन मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड माइक्रोब्स में देख रहा है पर जैसे मैंने बताया कि वी मे हैव टू फोकस ऑन प्राण एंड इम्प्रूव अवर होस्ट कंडीशन सो द बेस्ट वे टू डू दैट इज टू डू वाया अवर फूड एंड the air we take intake so pranayam surya namaskar jo maine bataya agar aap kar sakte to wo hai ke hai aur dusra anna paan jo maine bataya uske upar talks hoti rehti hai jo mere guru ji hai jinse maine main ayurved sikh raha hu unse keh kar main ek patrika jaisa bana sakta hu which can give this idea ke kaun si ayu mein kaun si season mein kya khorak khana chahiye तो इतना मैं कर सकता हूँ आप उस पर टॉक भी दे सकते हैं सर जी तो अगली बार मैंने एक्चुअली नोट यही करा था कि ऋतुओं के अनुसार भोजन तो अगर आप 
बताएंगे तो जी जी लेकिन दिक्कत ये आएगी कि नॉर्थ इंडिया साउथ इंडिया वेस्ट ईस्ट इतना सारा अलग अलग भोजन है कि कैसे कंपाइल हाँ। करेंगे वो पता नहीं आ, नहीं हो जाएगा ये आयुर्वेद में सभी प्रकार के आ, ये अन्न वर्ग है उसमें ऐसे सभी अन्न है जो भारत भर में अलग अलग जगह पे होते हैं सो so, जिनका जो मुख्य डायट होता है जैसे चावल आ, कोई एरिया में चावल मुख्य डायट है कोई एरिया में गेहूं मुख्य डायट है राइट तो उसके हिसाब से वो कैटेगरी में अन्न और पान जो प्राण ग्रहण करके रखता है और प्राण वहन करता है दोनों प्रकार के आहार का कॉम्बिनेशन हम बना सकते हैं दूसरा क्वेश्चन जो था एल्डरली पीपल के लिए खुराक राइट तो उसमें सिर्फ मैं आपको एक हिंट देना चाहूंगा कि जैसे हम हमारी शरीर की आयु बढ़ती है वैसे वैसे हमारे शरीर में वायु का प्रमाण बढ़ता है छोटी उम्र में छोटे बच्चों में कफ प्रधान प्रधान होता है गृहस्थ जीवन में पित्त प्रधान होता है और हमारी वानप्रस्थ जीवन में वायु प्रधान होता है तो वायु के विकार को रोकने के लिए जैसा आहार हम ले सके वो सबसे अच्छा रहता है उसके बारे में हम डिटेल में बात कर सकेंगे होस्ट कंडीशन जितनी हम इम्प्रूव करेंगे हमारी कंडीशन हमारी अग्नि जो डाइजेशन का काम करती है राइट right? हमारा प्राण जो उसमें मदद करता है राइट सभी फंक्शनिंग सेल्युलर फंक्शनिंग में अगर वो ठीक करेंगे तो कोई और प्रॉब्लम नहीं आएगा देर इज अचुरल साइकिल नेचुरल टाइम ड्यूरेशन फॉर विच द फूड शुड रिमेन इन अवर डाइजेस्टिव ट्रैक राइट क्या होता है कि जब वो फूड हमारा जो हम अभी खाते हैं जैसे मैदा राइट जितना अभी प्रोसेस्ड फूड है वो इतना स्मूथ है कि वो जितना टाइम डाइजेस्टिव ट्रैक में रहना चाहिए उतना टाइम वहां पर रहता ही नहीं है अगर वो रहेगा नहीं तो माइक्रोब्स उसके ऊपर काम नहीं कर पाएगा प्राण की प्रक्रिया होगी नहीं प्रक्रिया होगी नहीं तो वो उसमें से जितना भी प्राण शरीर में खींचना है जितने भी न्यूट्रिय लेने हैं वो उस, उसके लिए समय ही नहीं मिलेगा समय नहीं मिलेगा वो पूरा डेड फूड बन के स्टूल या यूरिन में चला जाएगा और बॉडी विल स्टार्ट creating problems due to lack of those nutrients, right? So ज्यादा प्रोसेस फूड भी खाने से प्रॉब्लम होते हैं उसके सामने एक एक्सट्रीम ऐसा भी आया है कि कुछ पकाने का ही नहीं सब कुछ रॉ ही खाने का वो भी एक एक्सट्रीम है ज्यादा पकाना भी एक्सट्रीम है हमारी पद्धति जो आयुर्वेद पद्धति है वो कहती है कि हमें मिडल पाथ लेना है सब कुछ सम में रखना है जब जब जो भी चीज पका के खानी है वो पका के खानी है जो भी चीज कच्ची खानी है वो कच्ची खानी है सो so, जब ये हम बैलेंस रखते हैं फूड प्रोसेसिंग में तो तो भी बहुत सारे प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो जाता है थैंक यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ग्रेट टॉक नुसक भाई रियली गुड टू सी यू इन दिस अवतार नाउ आई नो सो माय क्वेश्चन इज यू टॉक्ड अबाउट लाइट एंड प्राण सो can you shed some light on role of colors in ehloka tatva and microbial cloud connections have you come across some connections in in terms of colors and their impacts on us uh there are some hints but uh, i think i won't be able to explain it right now but uh, as i said in one research uh, physicist raja ramon rai and professor kapil kumar dwivedi they said that the marut or that radiation electromagnetic radiation is a major impacting factor and that covers all the different colors as well so yes uh, those colors related uh, their their waveform their wavelength frequencies they also matter i think this is a interesting topic that uh, we should go deep dive and have some practical solutions for them as well uh, email hai marut mitra एट द रेट जी मेल डॉट कॉम जी नमस्कार जय श्री कृष्ण निसर्ग भाई निसर्ग भाई को मैं पहचानता हूँ कुछ छह आठ महीने से एंड वी आर वर्किंग टूगेदर ऑन द एजुकेशनल पार्ट सो निसर्ग भाई मेरा क्वेश्चन ये था आपसे कि इट्स समवट सिमिलर टू वॉट लास्ट पार्टिसिपेंट आस्क राइट सो द माइक्रोव्स आर part of our uh, whole ecosystem and uh, there are so many new research and uh, this cell phone and the radiation stuff are around and day by day it's increasing like 4g network 5g network and all so how does that impact on 
the uh, entire ecosystem of this microbes and uh, how how we can avoid it or how we can improve our life by i don't know how to avoid those kind of uh, networks and all yeah so see we as i said central theme will remain the same that we need to keep control on our host condition jis pe hamara control hai our body our mind our pranamay kos uske upar jitna hum control rakh sakte hai uska isko usko jitna detox rakh sakte hai that is something that we can do there is a there are papers there is a impact of uh, electromagnetic radiation around into microbes as well but i don't have a specific conclusion that i can share over here but one practical solution which has helped me is earthing right barefoot it is it is much talked a solution in the world for anywhere if we have any problem with the electromagnetic disturbance in the body as i said like lightning also emit the electromagnetic radiation and it affects our body and mind so and the solution given by our ancestors is that do the earth, earthing barefoot go barefoot stay with the mud as much as possible so that could be one of the way to control it to help self to get rid of those toxins but it's not the perfect solution or uh, something that can be conclusive so it's still a research in progress thank you nisar ji uh, wapas earthing pe aajkal main bhi kuch kuch research kar raha hu to ek point bolta hu wo kuch positive ions aur negative ions aapne jo bijli ka example diya main bhi wahi soch raha tha maybe the body gets charged with positive ions and it seems that earth electromagnetic field creates negative ions so it, body just like lightning needs to find a release an exchange of ions and so with accumulation jaise autoimmune diseases ki bhi baat kar rahe the jitna main pad raha hu these largely happen because of inflammation in the body aur inflammation ka bahut bada karan hai hamari grounding aur earthing na hona jiska basically nange pair dharti par cement aur road pe nahi magar mitti aur ghas mein chalna to bas